Hey guys, and uh, welcome to part 3 of my uh, RPG game tutorial series in Blender. And uh, so basically, here's what we've got so far. Um, we've just got our basic player running around, right? And we've got some basic controls. Uh, if we go ahead and come in here and just test, test out the game real quick, we'll be able to see. You can run around and you stop and you kind of slide against these little blocks and all that cool stuff. And our physics is all working how we want it to. Everything is fine and dandy. Yeah, ignore that. So, this is good. Um, so basically, what I'm going to kind of get into now is we're going to talk about how to make this a little more portable. Um, because your character here, obviously you don't want to have to remake all this every time that you want to use them in a new level. So the easiest way to do that is to make the level, and then have the level call in this character. So when we do this, we don't need anything in here except for the camera and the player. That's it, and anything related to the player. Um, so we can get rid of the light, we can get rid of all these cubes, you just hold down shift when you're selecting objects to select multiple of them and we can select this plane and just press delete and delete or X and delete either one will work alright so now we've got our little player here and if you notice even when you go to shaded mode it's just black it actually all still works the same it's just you can't tell because your reference point is different so alright so go ahead and do that now to go ahead and make our first level um, I'm just going to make it sort of like a 3D version of a lot of those old Zelda games where you've basically got rooms and then you walk through a room and it loads the next level. Um, and if the levels are small, it'll be, it won't be seamless, but it'll be pretty smooth. So we'll go ahead and come over here and we're just going to make a new Blender file. Okay. And uh, go ahead and save this just as it is, as maybe Throne. Because we're going to make a Throne room. Uh, Alright, so we can do that. And uh, go ahead and save the Blender file there. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is create a floor, so we're just going to go ahead and press Shift A, and then we'll do actually we'll cube, just because we want it to be, you know, really more of a box scale Y2. So now it's twice as long as it is um, wide, and then scale the Z down by like 0.5, um, and maybe 0.75. Whoops. So there we go. All right, we're just going to kind of put this right above the line here. Sometimes what you need to do is you need to select all your points there, and then type um, Shift A, oops, Shift S, and then Snap Selection to Grid. And what that'll do is it'll put all the points onto grid points. All right, and this will just make it a little bit easier for manipulation. All righty, there we go. So there's our basic room. Um, I think it needs to be a little shorter, personally. You can, I mean, all this is really just up to you. You can do it however you want. Um, that looks about right. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and import our player. And this will be much too small, but we'll scale it up when we get there. Alright, so to bring in the player, what we're going to do is we're going to do File, Link, go into Player. So now what we're doing is we're looking at all the files and objects and everything inside of our player Blender file. Alright. Alrighty, so we're going to go in here to Object. And we're going to go into, we're going to select both of these, Shift Select, just like we did with the objects. Okay? And then click link slash append. Just make sure all these are the same. It should be fine. Boop. And now we've got our player, and we've got our camera. And if we press O, we'll go into this camera, which is exactly the same camera as the other one. So you'll see we actually have some issues here, because for one, the place we're running around in is way too small. Um, so because we don't want it to scale up right there, we really want it to scale from the center, so it's always on the floor on this y-axis right here, so it's always on this little plane. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to change our, um, what, are they, what are they called, pivot center, no, pivot point, to 3D cursor. So now everything moves around the 3D cursor. So if I put it up here, it'll move around there, okay? It'll scale away from there. If I put it back to the center point, it'll scale away from the center point, and that's exactly what we want. So just do this, scale times maybe 10, and that looks like it might be about right. So now we'll be able to see, just put it in wireframe mode. Oops. might have to flip the normals here. There we go. So, real quickly, just to understand what a normal is, if it's the normal direction here, all the faces are facing outward, because it's assuming you're going to be rendering it from this angle. Um, however, since we're going to be rendering it from the inside, we have to flip that, flipping the normals, and now it'll be rendered as if it's from the inside. Okay, so this is exactly what we want. This will solve a couple issues, uh, which I'll get into in a second. So let's go ahead and add a light... Um, for now, let's just use a point light. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. 
Um, and we're going to need to give the walls a texture so that it can see it in the GLSL. Let me make sure GLSL is in. Yeah, okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it, and we'll just call this one new texture, and we'll just call it floor for now. Um, it'll be something different later. Floor. Whoops. Floor. There we go. All right, so now let's try running around in here. Perfect. Okay, so we can run around this little room, and uh, it's pretty small. I think what we might want to do is scale it a little bit. X, scale X to scale Y to. That's looking more like a throne room now. Okay, that looks a lot better, I think. Alrighty, so now that'll work. That works pretty well. Um, let's go ahead and yeah. So first off, let's just for the lighting here. We're just gonna do. We're gonna maybe put a fire in the middle of the room, and that will be our lighting. Okay. So for now, just so we have some sort of a reference point, let's just go ahead and make a little mini fire pit. To do that, we're just gonna make a circle. Okay. Move up so you can see the circle here real quick. Uh, press T, and here's where you can change a lot of the settings in the cir of the circle. Okay. Now remember, you're trying to conserve vertices. The less vertices you have, the quicker it's going to render and the easier it's going to be for the computers to handle. So I'm just going to put this at 12. Um, realistically, most computers can handle more than that, uh, but that's just kind of a safe point there. All right, I went ahead and scale it up by 2. Now I'm going to go press tab to go into edit mode. Press T to get rid of that. I don't like having that there. Um, and then we're just going to E to extrude. You can move around. Press Z to move it on the uh, X axis, or Z axis. And just move it up to about there. Okay. Now, uh, let's. if you press uh, 5 on the number pad, you'll go into perspective mode, and you can actually get inside here then. There we go, so you can kind of see. So relative to your player, how big this is going to be, um, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, it doesn't matter. But I'm just going to make about this size. And then extrude again. Right-click so it goes back to where it was. S to scale. And then we're just going to... Oops. See, we've still got that selected, and we want to go back to medium point, which averages the position of all these to find the center. Uh, so then we're just going to kind of pull it out, maybe to about, I don't know, there. And then we're going to bring it back down. And if it goes through the floor, that's actually okay. Um, we'll talk about that some more in a minute as far as things going through each other. In fact, a lot of times it'll save you vertices. Okay, now as you can see, we have this really weird pattern here, and that's because the normals, like I was telling you before, are wrong. The normals in this room, if I take them and flip them, all of a sudden it goes black. Um... But if I were to take this light and put it on the outside, all of a sudden, from the outside, it looks right. Okay? And that's because it's rendering, it's paying attention to everything from the outside's perspective. When, in reality, we want it to be from the inside. Okay? Now, and this isn't as easy for this. If you flip the normals, it just changes which ones are which. Now, you can go through manually and select each face and flip its normal to the right one. But Blender has this awesome feature called Auto Normalize. And all you have to do is press, select all of them and press Control N and it'll try its best to get them all facing the correct direction. Sometimes it still has issues, and then you just have to go in and manually change it. But in general, this works pretty well. All right, now you can't move the player, and you can't move the camera, as you can see here. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to move everything else. It's just as easy, um, and then it doesn't mess with any of these things here. Okay, so what we're going to do is since we're going to want them to start off kind of down here at this end. We're just going to move everything down so the camera is basically right at that point there. Alright, let's go ahead and try this out, just see how it looks for now. So if we run around now, um, I apologize for the frame rate, it's because of the fact that I'm running a screen capture program. So there's that, you can see our nice little fire pit there, and uh, our little room. Alright, in the next tutorial we'll talk about getting some um, other lighting so it looks kind of like we got some fire, and then I'll also go over some of the uh, techniques for modeling a map. All right. Uh, until next time, uh, happy.